In today's video, we will be demoing the application mobility module, which is part of CSM. This specific module allows you to clone or move stateful container-based applications between different Kubernetes and storage platforms. Hi, good morning, good afternoon. My name is Erik Zongur, and I work as a cloud native automation evangelist for Dell Technologies. Today, we will be previewing a new container storage module called Application Mobility. This module will allow you to migrate any container-based application within Kubernetes that has persistent storage attached to it and actually move it to uh, either the same or another Kubernetes cluster. I will be running the first part of this demo where I, we actually look through the environment and uh, create a backup of the application that I have. And then my colleague Anuraj will take over that backup and restore it in his Kubernetes environment. So looking at my Kubernetes environment, it is just a very simple, plain vanilla Kubernetes deployment. So if I get the nodes, you can see that I only have one control node and then I have three worker nodes. So the application that I am running in here is uh, actually a WordPress instance. So if I do a get pods, you can see that I have a WordPress pod and I have got a MySQL pod running in there. And they're both backed by um, external storage. So if I do a get PVC, you can see that there's two bound volumes. Um, one is for SQL, that's 20 gigs in size. The other one is for WordPress itself, and that's five gig in size. Both connected up through the Dell CSI drivers into a Unity VSA. So that's a virtual edition of a Unity storage array. So when we look at the Unity, you can actually see the two volumes sitting here. When I look at block, you can see that these are iSCSI volumes. Um, both sitting here, one size is 20 gig, the other is uh, 5 gigs in size. Um, when we run the application mobility backup, of course, these volumes will be actually captured and backed up and then restored in the other environment. So um, let's look at the application uh, uh, mobility uh, CSM module. So this is the landing page for our container storage modules. You can see that, for example, the CSI drivers are in here, right? You can see how the CSI driver work, the capabilities for the different storage arrays, the supported versions that we have, um, and basically uh, 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 um, you can see that we support mostly yeses across the board for all of the different storage arrays that we have within the CSI specification. But of course, the CSI specification being part of Kubernetes is only part of what you can actually do, right? Uh, Kubernetes doesn't have like a native way for re replication. For example, it doesn't have a native way for application mobility. So those are things that we add on top using the container storage modules, right? You can see things like authorization, replication, uh, and also application mobility, which is the subject for today's demo. So application mobility, um, note it is still a tech preview. Um, still all the bits and pieces are there, right? It, it tells you how to deploy into an environment. Uh, and the cool part about this module is that, yes, it works with the Dell CSI driver, but it also works with other CSI uh, uh, drivers. So you could actually migrate into an Amazon cloud as well if you wanted to. Um, further, there we have things like use cases, and we'll be running through these use cases in more detail in the demo today. So, um, like I told you, yep, you have an application running. We have the CSR driver for Unity installed in this environment in order to make it all work. Um, we can actually see that it works here. If I go to this Kubernetes node on this port, you can actually see that, yes, I have a uh, a, a customized WordPress installation just to show that um, you can actually move it around and uh, make it look uh, the same at the other end. Um, and of course, we need application mobility itself. So I already installed it into this environment. So if I do a kubectl get pods and I go into the namespace for application mobility, you can see that it's all running here. So you can see that currently we support RESTIC as a data mover. 
uh, Valero's in there as well to actually capture all of the bits and pieces uh, of the Kubernetes uh, uh, configuration for our application. So um, there's actually two ways of talking to application uh, mobility. Uh, one is through the Dell CTL command line tool. So I could do get uh, 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 Dell CTL backup get for the namespace. Um, I'll be just copy pasting that. And you can see that currently it returns nothing. There's no backup created. Um, it does use S3 as a backend storage. So we could verify within S3. And here, if we look at S3, you can see that we've created a bucket here. You can see that there's some default stuff in there, but there's no restores and there's no backup to be found here. So that should change once we, of course, we create a backup. And um, I could use Dell CTL backup create to actually make a backup, or I could do it through YAML. So I prepared a piece of YAML code already. Uh, let me just show you what I have. Um, as you can see, very straightforward. Um, it calls to the API mobility.storage.dell.com. The kind is backup. And then I specify the name for this backup, which is WordPress backup one. And I specify the included namespace to be default because at the moment my WordPress installation is running in the default namespace. So let's just um, uh, uh, kick off. But before I kick off this, um, uh, this command, all right, with apply minus F, um, I should show you the second window where I actually have a watch running that says Dell CTL backup get for application mobility. So it's constantly checking whether there's a backup. So the backup that I'm about to create should actually pop up here. So when I execute, yep, it is created. Now I can see here that it actually landed. Um, the status is new, so it's preparing the backup. And in a few seconds, it will go to in progress, meaning that backup is being made. That's what we can see here. And now we just need to give it a few seconds uh, for the backup to be completed. As you can see, the backup is now complete, um, which basically means that all of the stuff should be within S3. So if I refresh in the S3 browser, you can now see that there's a folder created called backups. You can see our backup sitting here and you can see all the related files. So with that, we are basically good to go to restore it elsewhere. And this is the time that I'll hand over to my colleague Anuraj to actually look at this backup from his perspective and then restore it and show that it works in his own Kubernetes environment. Hi, my name is Anuraj. I work as engineering technologist with Dell Technologies. In this environment, I have an OpenShift cluster 4.11. So we'll verify the nodes in the cluster. And this cluster is already integrated with Dell PowerStore array using CSI driver. And the CSI driver is installed in the PowerStore namespace. So let's verify the CSI driver. So we can see the CSI driver running. I already created a storage class to use the CSI driver for dynamically provisioning the volumes from PowerStore. So we can see the storage class here. And this array doesn't have any PVC or PV. We can verify the same thing from the PowerStore console also. Let's go to the PowerStore console. So in the PowerStore console, we can see there is no volume provision from the CSI driver. And I already installed the CSM application mobility module onto this cluster. So we can verify the application mo mobility installation. So we can see it is successfully deployed onto this cluster. Now we can try to restore the backup which took by uh, my colleague Eric into the S3 bucket. So we are using an S3 bucket which is provisioned from the object scale storage. So we can go to the uh, Dell object scale storage console where we can see 
there is a bucket created s3 bucket application mobility and we are using this bucket to upload the backup so we can go to s3 browser and see the backup is there now we can see the backup wordpress hyphen backup one is already in the s3 bucket so now we will be able to restore this backup into the OpenShift cluster. So this backup restoration can be done using del ctl command or using the yaml file. So in this demo, I'm, I'm going to use the yaml file. So I already created a yaml file. So let's see the yaml file for the restoration. So this is the yaml file so this is the name i had given and i'm restoring from the backup wordpress backup one and there is a namespace mapping where this application the wordpress application is running in the default namespace in the vanilla kubernetes environment i'm going to restore this application into a new namespace called wordpress in the openshift cluster so that is the namespace mapping which we can see here now I'm going to initiate the restore. So let's verify. We can see the newly created restore is in in progress state we'll wait till the backup is, the restore is completed Okay, now we can see the restoration is completed. Let's verify all the ports in the WordPress namespace. Okay, now we can see all the ports are running and we'll see the PVCs are created and all the PVs are successfully provisioned. Okay, now we can see there is two PVCs got created 20 GB and 5 GB also we'll verify the PV so correspondingly there is two PVs got created and it is already in bound state and using this storage class powerstore xfs so now we can go to the powerstore console and verify these volumes are created there so let's go to the powerstore console so this is my power store so now let's refresh now we can see there is two volumes got dynamically provisioned by the csi driver during the restoration of size 5 gb and 20 gb now we can create a node port service Okay, so we can use this port to connect to the application. Let's go here. Now we can see the application successfully got migrated from the vanilla Kubernetes to OpenShift. Thank you, Anuraj. What we've just showed you was one of the modules within Dell CSM called Application Mobility. We successfully managed to migrate a cloud-native container that had persistent storage attached to it 
uh, and moved it between two different Kubernetes platforms. So we were actually moved it from, in this case, to from a vanilla Kubernetes platform into an OpenShift environment. But there's nothing keeping you from doing it the other way around or maybe to a completely different uh, Kubernetes platform altogether. On top of that, we had different storage technologies backing both Kubernetes platforms, meaning we're completely flexible in source and destination Kubernetes platform and in the backing storage for both of these platforms to be used. So this concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching and be on the lookout for more videos from us. Have a good day.